PGP or Border Gateway Protocol has been added to the CCNA. So it's important that you have an understanding of the protocol and know how to configure a basic topology with BGP. BGP is a very large subject and you can spend a lot of time learning the ins and outs of BGP. However, for the CCNA, it's very much an introduction to BGP. When looking at the CCNA exam topics, in this case for the 200-125 exam, we can see that one of the exam topics is configure and verify single homed branch connectivity using eBGP IP version 4. The exam is limited to peering and route advertisement using the network command only. So again, BGP is a very large topic. I'm gonna to explain a little bit more where I show you the configuration of both IBGP and eBGP. The configuration is essentially exactly the same at CCNA level. In this GNS3 topology, I have two autonomous systems, 65001 and 65002. I'm using public IP version 4 addresses in this topology. You can see the list of assigned slash 8 IPv4 address blocks on Wikipedia. So in our topology, I'm using network 8, which belongs to level 3. I'm using network 15, which belongs to HP and I'm using network 17, which belongs to Apple. So Apple are connecting through level three to HP in this topology. I've configured IP addresses on these routers, but nothing else. So show IP protocols. BGP is not enabled on this router and neither are IGPs or interior gateway protocols such as EIGRP and OSPF. BGP is an exterior gateway routing protocol. In other words, it allows for communication between autonomous systems. OSPF and EIGRP would run within the autonomous systems, hence they're called IGPs or interior gateway protocols. So, on router one, router BGP. We need to choose an autonomous system number in this example, I'm going to choose autonomous system number 65001. BGP, unlike other routing protocols, requires the configuration of a neighbor. You have to manually and explicitly specify your neighbor relationships. They're not formed automatically like they would be in OSPF or EIGRP. So in this example, we need to specify that 17.1.1.2 is a neighbor and we use the command remote AS to specify the autonomous system number of the neighbor. Even though they both within the same autonomous system, we still use the remote AS number. So IBGP or interior BGP and eBGP or external BGP both use the remote AS number command. We need to advertise routes in BGP and to do that we'd use the network command now this uses a standard mask and not an inverse mask. And it's really important that you have your masks set right. Show IP BGP. The show IP BGP command shows us that the BGP table version is two. BGP has its own routing table. So it has that in addition to the IP version four routing table. The router ID is 17.1.1.1. This router only has that IP address configured on it. In the real world, you probably want to use loopbacks, but to keep it simple, I've only used physical interfaces. We can see that the network is advertised into the BGP routing table. That's what we're viewing over here. So show IP route shows us the IP version 4 routing table. Show IP BGP shows us the BGP routing table. This network has been advertised into BGP with a next hop of 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. That means it's the local router that's advertised the network. I'll discuss some of the other options such as weight and path in a separate video. Show IP BGP summary. This is an important command to remember. It shows us, once again, the router ID, it shows us the local autonomous system number. It shows us the neighbors at the moment, this neighbor is set to idle. BGP relies on TCP. 
in the same way that Telnet does. At the moment, we have no TCP sessions. Idle means that we don't have a neighbor relationship established to that peer. No TCP sessions have been established. The reason for that is we need to configure the neighbor. In BGP, it works as follows. Just because I wanna be your neighbor doesn't mean that you wanna be my neighbor. Both sides have to agree to form a neighbor relationship. So both sides have to be manually configured for the neighbor relationship to be established. So here we're gonna specify neighbor, 17.1.1.1, remote AS, 65001. And then we can advertise the network into BGP. And notice as I'm typing that, the neighbor relationship has come up. So I'll just complete this, advertise that network into BGP, advertise this network. All networks are using a slash 24 mask in this topology. So I'll advertise 8.8.8.0 .8 into BGP. So we saw the neighbor relationship come up. So we can use the command show IP BGP summary. This command can be very confusing. Notice the state is empty or is blank. Nothing is displayed here. The output is looped. One prefix has been received. In other words, the neighbor has advertised a network to us. Show IP BGP summary. State is blank. That actually means established. And here we can see that two networks have been advertised by the neighbor to us. So show IP BGP neighbor shows us that the BGP neighbor is this. It's an internal link. In other words, we're using iBGP. BGP version used is version four. That's kind of like OSPF version two or OSPF version three, but this is BGP version four. Remote router ID is 17.1.1.2. This router, router two, only has these two IP addresses configured, and the address with the highest number was used as a router ID. What's important to note here is the BGP relationship is established. Established means that the neighbor relationships have been formed and the routers are exchanging routes with one another. So show IP BGP summary this state actually means established, it means they are advertising routes to one another. Show IP BGP. The BGP routing table now contains 8.8.8.0, .8 which was advertised by router two. The local router has also learnt about 17.1.1.0 from both itself as well as router two. The greater than sign means that this is the best selection. So for this network, the local router believes itself rather than the other router. It's more likely that you're gonna believe yourself than you're gonna believe me. So hence the local router selects itself as the best path to that network. On router two, let's configure the neighbor relationship to router three. So we go back into BGP and we type neighbor 8.8.8.2 remote AS 65002. So show run pipe section BGP shows us the BGP configuration. We have configured two neighbor relationships. We're advertising two networks into BGP. On router three, router BGP 65002, neighbor 8.8.8.1, remote. AS 65001 network, and I'll advertise both networks into BGP. So network 8.8.8.8 .8 and network 15.1.1.0. So show IP BGP summary. Let's do that again. Show IP BGP summary. Router ID is this, autonomous system is this. Neighbor relationship is established to this neighbor relationship. Show IP BGP neighbor. Notice the neighbor 8.8.8.1 .8 is an external neighbor. We're running eBGP to that neighbor. BGP version is four once again. 
router ID of the neighbor is 17.1.1.1.2. So show IP BGP. The BGP routing table contains these networks. So at this point, we should be able to ping router one, which we can. I'm gonna turn off IP domain lookup and trace without a DNS lookup. There are no DNS servers in this topology, so. First router that we hit is 8.8.8.1, .8 which is router two, and then we get to router one in autonomous system number 65001. So we now have connectivity between router one, router two, and router three. So to prove that, router one can ping router three. Last router to configure is router four. Router BGP 65002, neighbor 15.1.1.1, remote AS 65002, network 15.1.1.0, mask 255.255.255.0. Show IP BGP summary. Neighbor relationship is idle. We need to configure the neighbor relationship on router three. So on router three, router BGP 65002, neighbor 15112, remote AS 65002. Neighbor relationship has come up. So on router four, show IP BGP. We've learned BGP routes, show IP route. Notice the eight network is displayed in the routing table and so is the 17 network. Ping 17.1.1.1, ping succeeds. So just to reiterate, BGP uses TCP, so the command show TCP brief. As you can see in the output here, the local router has a TCP session from itself to router three, and that TCP session is established. So we have a TCP session that needs to be established. For us to receive BGP routes, the neighbor relationship needs to be established. So you see established with a show IP BGP neighbor command, the show IP BGP summary command, be careful, the state is blank when it's working. If you see active, it means it's not working. BGP active doesn't mean that it's working. It means that there's a problem. BGP established means that it's working properly. So last test. Can we ping router one? Yes, we can. Can router one ping router four? Yes, it can. So that's how you configure basic BGP in preparation for the CCNA exam. Don't forget that you need to manually configure BGP neighbor relationships. So on each BGP router, you need to configure the autonomous system number. You need to configure the neighbor relationship and you use the network command to advertise routes through BGP. That essentially looks for routes in the IP routing table that match that network command and then adds those networks to the BGP routing table for advertisement. Show IP BGP shows us what the BGP routing table looks like. The greater than sign means that that's the best route to the destination network or prefix. This means that the network was advertised through IBGP this means that the network was advertised into BGP using the network command. I'm hoping that gives you a good introduction to BGP in preparation for the CCNA exam. Please let me know if there are any other topics that you'd like discussed as part of the CCNA vlog. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. It means a lot to me if you like the video and especially if you subscribe to my channel. I wish you all the very best.